Hi viewers, I trust you are well and my name is Tess and today I have a, today I have an occupational therapist on board. We have invited her to explain to us the, who an occupational therapist is as well as um, the role of an OT. So I'll ask her to introduce herself and take us from there. Okay, good evening viewers. Where we are, it's, it's night time, so we are doing it in the evening. So good evening viewers. Yes, so my name is Perpetual Mundi. I'm an occupational therapist and uh, managing director of Dynamic Occupational Therapy Limited. Uh, it is children who have any limitations or any conditions that cause them limitations in participating in the occupation. And we said the occupation is play and school. They play and go to school. So anything that causes them limitation, then the occupational therapist is involved. But as we talk about it, who, who tells the children they need therapy? Because it doesn't come just like that, that the child will just need therapy and you go straight to the occupational therapist. So we actually start the, the process with, with, with the medical practitioners, that is the doctors. So we have a team of pediatricians. So you have pediatricians who assess these children and they tell them now this child has a delay here. They're doing good here, but here they have a delay. So please go to the occupational therapy department. They'll be able to guide you. So that is one referral, the pediatrician. And we also have another line for developmental pediatricians. Those who now look specifically at the development and they tell them, okay, now you go to the occupational therapist. Then we have child psychiatrists, those who are able to diagnose autism. And they tell the parents, now you, please go to an occupational therapist for any other for help for your child in regards to therapy. So then also we have educational psychologists. So educational psychologists come more in the school dynamic where they're able to identify this child has dyslexia, this child has this learning difficulties, this child has global learning difficulties. So the, 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 the educational psychologists now are another referral point where they tell now the child, now you, you need occupational therapist. Then now we find even in our multidisciplinary setup, meaning everyone who works together in the rehabilitation world, we find the child can be referred to the OT by a physio, the child can be referred to the OT by a speech therapist, the child can be referred to the OT by the orthopedic technician or the one who does the orthopedic. So we find that the people who can tell the child needs therapy are very many, but we don't leave out the parent. Sometimes the parents can tell there's a delay in my child and I believe the delay is here, here. Let me go visit an occupational therapist and they'll be able to help me. So they find that the parents also have the, 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 the way to come to the occupational therapist and say, this is where I've seen a delay in my child and I need intervention. So those is, that is how the, the children find themselves to uh, the space of an occupational therapist. Another condition I, I forgot to mention is Down syndrome. So also occupational therapists work with children with Down syndrome. So I have covered uh, what conditions the occupational therapists work with, some, because there are so many stroke, there are so many conditions, but those are the common ones you'll find the occupational therapist working with the children on. Even children with hands, they work with occupational therapy. So you find that you, there, there are very many conditions that children need occupational therapy. So I've just named a few. So once the child has come to therapy, they have started receiving therapy. We at times get the question of, did I come too late? A mother comes and they say, wow, my child has reached this age. Uh, is it too late? So in terms of children, we say something called early intervention. And we say it is important the earliest time you notice your child has a challenge and they need therapy, that is the time you should engage in therapy. Because as the children grow older, it takes a little bit longer because the brain changes and you find that it is not as adaptive as it was or flexible as it was when they were younger. So there are things they would have achieved really fast when they are younger than when they are older. So we always say early intervention is key. But there is no, there, 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 there is not, we can't say that there is nothing an OT can do. It's just that there, when there are, some, there are some conditions and the age when they come, now it's more of management. You are just managing 
but you you train but more of management but when they come early you're able to change so many things so i always tell parents it is important to let your child visit a therapist as soon as you find they need to so i would put an age cap but it's always as early as possible it's like asap as soon as possible as when you're able to identify there's a challenge just bring your child or get an occupational therapist to be able to assess and see this is what the child needs so that is what i can say about is am i late because at times you get that question i wish i could have come early i wish i could have done this so it is important for a par- as a parent you know as soon as possible get your child the right kind of help, get your child the right kind of therapy so then another question that comes is that so how long will they stay in therapy mm-hmm. they come and they say we are doing therapy so can you give us time frames uh and are we staying for two years are we staying for three years four years five years so in therapy it is very hard to say about timelines unless you're working on things like uh handwriting because as school based you work on handwriting and we say we will take this amount of time to see this and see this progress then after some time the child will start winning off of therapy then the child will be off therapy then will be still doing some observations but there are some things that don't have time frames why because every child is different and every condition is different you might have for example two children with down syndrome but not all of them will require the same amount of help one will require more help than the other and one will require less help so if you were to put time frames it is very hard but all i can tell parents is that there is that gradual progression that you should be seeing when the child is going to therapy but the progression is dependent on the capabilities of your child so it is important as a parent to understand what can my child currently be able to do now they have started therapy and the therapy has gone on after some time what am i expected to see sit and discuss with your therapist sit and discuss with whoever is working with your child and they tell you so this is what we are working on these are the goals because even in therapy we have goals so we set goals and say uh we are working towards this this is the short term this is the long term so there is always progression work with your therapist and find out what is the progression and what are we working towards because it's like i always tell parents therapy is like going to the gym if you go to the gym you want to lose weight or add muscles they they will tell you according to the work you do is how the output will be so if you go there lift weights the whole day and expect that you lose weight or gain muscles it is very hard and it's impossible and if you do then you should be coming to study you as an individual <laughs> to see how you are able to do it so the same thing with therapy. yeah <laughs> so the same thing with therapy the parents need to understand why the children need therapy what is the capability of their child and be able to have realistic expectations because the challenge you also get is that the i believe parents want the best for their children but we also have realistic expectations where as therapists we should we should be able to share realistically where the child is and where they are headed and as parents we should be able to embrace that that this is where my child is and this is where they are headed so then even when they make progress you'll be able to clap for them but if you have an unrealistic expectation when they make progress you won't see the progress because you have set a bar so high that the child whatever progress they are making you won't be able to see so if i can summarize the the how long that is how i'll summarize it so when you hear the therapy saying we are working towards this and hopefully we'll achieve this by this time when they don't achieve it not saying that they don't work it's just that it is very hard to set timelines but some conditions the children don't take too long in therapy you find that there are some conditions it's it's really touch and go like the handwriting once the handwriting is sorted it's 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 sorted there is no two ways just the child has to maintain the activities once the the for example let's say we are working on the coordination once the coordination has come it's just that there are things they just need to maintain So you find that there are things is touch and go but there are things that children who will require therapy all their lives. So it's those ones we need to see and sit, sit and say 
this one, they will require this one, this one, they will require this one, this one, they will require this one. So the decision is made out of various assessments. The decision is made out of uh, various uh, looking at what can the child be able to do. The decision is made from what can the parents access because you find that there are some children who need a number of, of, of interventions. They will need speech therapy, they will need physiotherapy, they will need occupational therapy. This one child will need a, a child psychology. So you find that there are children who need more than one service. They need even more than the OT. So the parents may sit and wait and say, okay, this is what I can be able to afford as for now. This is what I'm investing. So yeah. that determines even how long whichever platform of, 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 of help you will get. So that's what I can say in terms of how long my child will stay in therapy. So I think I've touched on most of the areas, but Teresa can highlight anything in case I have forgotten yeah, that I, you might need it in writing. The, the only one thing that uh, I wanted us to remember to talk about in this meeting was the parent I was telling you who felt that uh, her child is touching herself inappropriately. So I, I wanted you to touch on that and uh, how an occupational therapist comes in and if it's something the parent should worry about, is it a behavior that the child will win off eventually? Yeah, just a little advice for that parent. Okay, so for that one, you find that there's a little bit of more information that would really guide. So I will just skim through because the, there is a lot of information that I need to get. I need to know the age of the child. I need to know the, the, the condition the child has. I might need to know um, uh, many other things in terms of the family setting, who is around, who is the child and only child. So there are many things I would love to know, but I will answer with a bit of skim through. So what I can say is that when you, when you say parents say the children touching themselves inappropriately, there's a stage of development that actually that is, that is part of development where children get to explore and find out am I a boy or a girl and uh, well, my body how is my body made this this part is different this one is different this one so there's a normal stage of development where they do that but then now we need to find out where the mother is highlighting the child is touching inappropriately what age are they maybe it is just normal stage of development where the mother is noticing hey, okay this child is touching themselves but you find that it is a normal stage of development if they are within that age frame. Yeah. But if they're a little bit older, so now we'll be working with ifs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. So if they're a little bit older now, the parent needs to find out what cognitive level is this child in. So I might be eight, but I am two yeah. in terms of where I am cognitively. So um I might be so the, that that those are some of the things we need to consider cognitive cognitive level, and then now when we've considered the cognitive level, then if we are to teach this child what to do and what not to do, it is also still dependent on the cognitive level. Can the child be able to understand this is not right, this is right, this is not right, this is right? So I would encourage the parent to assess their child. Can they be able to understand if this is right, this is not right? And then also get to get to know what stage of development are they? What is acceptable, what is not acceptable? Yeah. And then they need to understand. Now, if, for example, I find that their cognitive level that they understand somehow a little bit that the, this is not right, then I can, I can teach them with social stories why it is not appropriate to do this or do this or do this or do this. So then now the parent can be able to, to, to work on that in that dynamic. I know it sounds like a skim through, but it gives the parent the overview of there are very many things surrounding this and how you, are, how you deal with it will be able, will either bring shame to the child or they will be able to say, okay, then this is, so you can even bring it in such a way that they discover this is a natural part of life where you teach them, you can even teach them skills like this is, this is what is private, this is what is public. Yeah. So it's just yeah. getting to understand the cognitive level and then working, working through with that child to understand what is appropriate, what is not. But still remember, 
age. If it is that age where they 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 touch themselves, then you just have to highlight to them. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let's say Mary, don't do that in public or don't do what. But it is a stage that passes. If it is no more development, it shall pass. But if it is not, then one has to find a way of addressing it. Okay. Yeah, I think that for today's discussion, that is the point that uh, I felt we needed to touch on. So that uh, it gives the parent an idea of the many possibilities that can be leading to a child t um, touching herself. And also that um, she can consider now seeking the help of a, um, an OT or even a pediatrician. Yeah, that is the point that I really wanted us to touch on. Yeah. We can say that is it for today. And uh, if you parents have any questions or you viewers, anybody viewing us and you feel you have any questions for the OT, we're going to leave her number on the on the banner of the video and as and her contacts on the comments section. So you can reach her directly and ask her all the questions that you may want to know. If you also want to seek her services, I believe she's also available. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. It was lovely being on your platform, Teresa. Yes. <laughs> <Or Teresa. laughs> uh, for honoring the request to join me on my platform. I'm grateful. Thank you. Yeah. You're so welcome. All right. So until then, our viewers, we we hope you keep safe, and we'll be in touch 